Good morning, everyone. I'm Judith Sheft, the Executive Director of the New Jersey Commission on Science, Innovation, and Technology. I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Maku Edda, and together the two of us are going to talk about this new program that launched yesterday, the Catalyst Seed Grant R&D Program. The mission of the commission is to strengthen innovation-based economy within the state, encouraging collaboration and connectivity between industry and academia and the translation of innovations into high growth businesses. We specifically support early stage entrepreneurs and innovation-based entrepreneurial companies. We help to link and leverage resources and fill in the gaps in services and support for companies that are focused on technology commercialization with the potential for high growth and further investment. This particular program, the Catalyst Seed Grant R&D program, is to help early stage innovation-based companies accelerate the development of technologies to transform new discoveries from research stage into commercially viable products and services. So this is very much focused on companies who are working on research stage projects. There are two grant components that companies can apply for, and you may apply for only one of the following. If you are a company that is working in the life sciences area, specifically on therapeutic drug development, research and development, you can apply for a grant of $150,000. For applicants who are working in other areas, such as advanced manufacturing, advanced transportation and logistics, film and digital media, other types of life sciences inventions, non-retail food and beverage, professional and financial services and technology can apply for grants of $75,000. Companies who are working specifically in the clean tech space are not eligible to apply for the Catalyst Grant. We will be having a Catalyst, we will be having a clean tech seed grant coming out in the first quarter of 2022. So what is the purpose of the grant? And I'm gonna go through both the 75K grant and the 150K grant, talking about the types of documentation that's required, eligibility requirements, and then Maku, towards the latter part of the second half of the presentation, is gonna walk you through specifically the online application form. So again, the purpose of the grant is to help increase the intensity of research, including advanced manufacturing, advanced transportation logistics, film and digital media, life sciences other, non-retail food and beverage, professional financial services, and technology. And on the next slide, you'll see what are the eligibility criteria to apply for the grant. So first, a note, you must be eligible at the time that you are submitting your application and you must maintain that eligibility during the entire evaluation period. So what are the eligibility requirements? First, you must be authorized and in good standing to conduct business in the state of New Jersey as evidenced by a current New Jersey tax clearance certificate that lists the New Jersey Commission on Science, Innovation and Technology on the tax clearance document. Second, you must have a minimum of one full-time equivalent employee with at least one employee working 50% of their time on the project being proposed. So you could have a business that is made up of two people who are each working 50% of their time on the project, and that would be acceptable because you've got the one full-time equivalent employee, you've got one person working at least 50% of the time. You could not be eligible if you had 10 people each working a 10th of their time on the project, because while that would equate to one full-time equivalent employee, you would not have one employee working at least 50% of their time on the project. The third criteria is that 50% or more of the work of the employees or contractors need to be conducted in New Jersey. And again, this is calculated on a full-time equivalent basis. On the next slide, 
we have some additional eligibility requirements that again, need to make, be maintained at the time of application and during the entire evaluation period. At least 50% or more of employees or contractors working in the business either have to live or pay withholding taxes in New Jersey. Again, because the commission is focused on very early stage companies, the company must have less than $2 million in prior third party funding over its lifetime, excluding government grants. So again, we're looking at that $2 million, but we are excluding government grants that could be SBIR, STTR grants or contracts. Those do not count in this $2 million calculation. In terms of the size of the company, the company must have less than $500,000 in previous calendar year sales revenue. Because again, we're trying to focus on very early stage companies. On the next slide, I'm going to talk about the required documentation. There's an online application. And in the second half of this presentation, we'll show you how to access the online application and how to fill it out. A second piece of documentation is that we require evidence that you have achieved proof of concept for the project. And there's a couple of different types of documentation that's acceptable for proof of concept. You might have written a paper, you may have some other uh, results that you've achieved that you can demonstrate. You may have gotten some federal funding around this. You may have a, a license or some information from a university tech transfer office, but we want to know that proof of concept has been achieved for the projects that you're proposing, that it's not an idea that you've just come up with and you think, gosh, I think this might work. We need proof of concept. Additionally, we're going to need information on your employees. You saw on the earlier slide that we had some requirements about the number of employees that you have. There's different kinds of documentation that you may be able to submit as part of the application process, being able to demonstrate your employee information that you're providing. An NJWR 30 for your W-2 employees. You may have 1099 forms. You may have shareholder agreements or K-1s because some of your employees may not be taking a salary and that's, that's fine because again, we understand for very early stage companies, not everyone is, is taking a salary at the moment, or you may have offer letters that you might have said someone has just gotten is just getting started. They haven't gotten a payroll check yet, so we've got an offer letter indicating what their salary is going to be. If you have had a most internal payroll, we'd like to see the most recent internal payroll documentation that you have as well. Some other documentation that's required is the company's most recent tax filings. And these are some of the kinds of documentation that you could supply to demonstrate that. Your federal 941, your New Jersey CBT 100 or form 10, 1065 or form 1040, being able to demonstrate that. Number six, the New Jersey tax clearance certificate listing the Commission on Science, Innovation and Technology. I'm gonna make a comment. We know that sometimes uh, getting some of the uh, state forms can take a little bit of time. So if you don't have a current New Jersey tax clearance certificate, please put that down as one of the first things that you go off to get. If you've got any problems uh, getting that documentation, you know, please reach back out to us because we can help facilitate if there's some challenges that you're having with that documentation. For companies who are women or minority owned, if you are having New Jersey certification, if that's applicable, please get that documentation as well. There's no cost to get the MWBE certification if that's relevant for your company. You're going to need to sign the application and there's a completed legal department questionnaire that needs to be provided. Additionally, we're going to now talk about the 150K grant funding, which is very similar in terms of the kinds of requirements that companies need in terms of eligibility and the kinds of documentation that they need to provide. 
Again, for the eligibility, you need to be in good standing to conduct business in New Jersey with that tax clearance certificate. Again, it needs to list the Commission on Science, Innovation and Technology. When you go into the uh, Business Premier system from Treasury to get that documentation, there's a pull down tab where you can indicate which agency you need the tax clearance certificate for. Again, the minimum of one full-time equivalent employee with at least one employee working 50% of their time on the project being proposed. And thirdly, 50% or more of the work of the employees and contractors calculated on a full-time equivalent basis needs to be done in New Jersey. Now, some of the other eligibility. 50% or more of the employees or contractors live or pay withholding taxes in New Jersey. And again, these two requirements, less than 2 million in prior third party funding over the lifetime of the company, again, excluding any government grants that the company may have received and less than 500,000 in previous calendar year revenue. Again, the types of documentation, the completed online application, and when Maku goes through the online application later, you're going to see this is where you're going to answer questions about what you're proposing, your budget, your team, and so forth. So that's where the technical proposal comes in. It's part of the online application. Again, demonstrated evidence that proof of concept has been achieved for the project, your employee information, summary of the most recent internal payroll documentation company tax filing documentation, tax clearance, minority and women-owned business certification from the state of New Jersey, if that's applicable for your business, the signed application certification, and the completed legal debarment questionnaire. Now I want to talk a little bit about the evaluation process and, and how, how everything works. You're gonna submit, you're gonna go into the online portal, you're gonna start working on your application. You don't have to finish it all at one point in time. There's also no uh, advantage to being the first or the last to submit an application. It, it doesn't matter whether your app, you know, when in the process your application came in. The first thing we're gonna do with all of the applications is we're gonna do a completeness review to make sure that all of the required documents are there. As you saw on the slides before, there's a lot of different moving pieces that are required. And if for some reason you're missing a piece of documentation, you will get an email from CSIT outlining the required document that's missing and giving you 10 business days to complete and submit that documentation uh, for us. Now, again, we know that some of the state systems may be a little bit longer to get that documentation. And if we've got evidence that you're trying to get that documentation, but it hasn't come in within the 10 days, just give us the evidence that you're trying to get that documentation and we will accept that for doing the evaluation process. Once we have all of the complete applications, we know these are the, the set that have gotten all of their documents together. We're gonna to do an external review with subject matter experts who are gonna provide some input in the evaluation of the technical and business merit of the projects being proposed. Because there's no way that the CSIT staff is subject matter knowledgeable enough on everything that's being proposed so we have some external reviewers who are under non-disclosure who will provide some input to us. That input will then be brought to an internal evaluation committee consisting of people from the Commission on Science, Innovation and Technology and the New Jersey Economic Development Authority who will score each application. The evaluation committee may contact the uh, applicants for some clarifying comments and there is an opportunity for the uh, applicants to make a brief presentation to the evaluation committee on their application. Everything is then brought to the CSIT program committee that reviews the application and makes recommendations to the CSIT board and the board makes the final decision 
on the grant winners. So it's a it's a bit of a process. So even though everything is due by the end of uh, end of January, going through this process with the completeness reviews, the subject matter reviews, the opportunity for applicants to make their their presentations and the evaluation and scoring. It is likely not going to be until the latter half of the year that we're going to be able to make awards for the Catalyst uh, seed grants. I want to talk a little bit about the scoring for these uh, applications. And again, when you listen to the piece of the presentation that Maku is going to give, you're going to hear about different questions that you have to uh, answer. And in order for us to evaluate, we are, we're giving points to different criteria. So 30 points for innovation, 10 points looking at economic impact, which is number of jobs that you think you're able to create. We're going to give points for you for you, the team capabilities, up to 10 points for go-to-market strategy, up to 20 points on your described implementation plan, and up to 10 points for market opportunity. On this base level scoring, an application must get at least 70 points minimum in order to be eligible for an award. Now, what happens if we've got more eligible companies, applications, than we've got dollars available to make awards? We then go into our bonus scoring criteria. And on the next slide, you'll see where we give bonus points. If your technology has been coming out of a New Jersey university as evidenced by an executed license agreement from that university, you get 15 points. If it's a woman owned business, 10 points. A minority owned business, 10 points. And if it's in an opportunity zone eligible census track where your either headquarters or R&D location is taking place, you get five points. So what are some of the other terms and conditions that you need to be cognizant of? You have to agree, if you get an award from the commission, this is similar to requirements for our other grant awards, that you will maintain 50% of your research development, manufacturing, and commercialization work in New Jersey for a period that should say three years. It, it says two, but it's supposed to be, I see the word says two, that should be three as, as it's indicated as the number three from the effective date of the grant completion and two years. So again, this is, this is all supposed to be three years. We will fix this particular slide before that uh, gets, uh, gets sent out. But it's three years that you need to maintain your activities in New Jersey. You have to commit to providing economic impact data for a period of five years as outlined in the grant agreement. Because again, we need to have this data to be able to report back to the legislators. And all grant awardees are invited to participate in different uh, CSIT alumni activities, uh, conducting interviews and serving as panel members. And as I said, we will correct this particular slide in the, in the version that is uh, that is posted so that we've got those we've got that information uh, correct for you. We also do sister agency checks. We conduct sister agency checks for all applicant companies. We verify that there's no outstanding issues with the Department of Environmental Protection (DEP) as well as no issues that your company has with the Department of Labor, and you need to pass those checks in order to be eligible for an award. Now some critical information. The application portal opened yesterday. And if you've got any questions, we've got the link for where you, where you apply and Maku is gonna show you that shortly. If you have any questions, you can call us, you can email at CSIT at NJEDA. Uh, dot com. Uh, both Maku and I look at that and we encourage you to be sure that you include that email address in your safe email addresses to avoid having it land in a, uh, 
in a junk junk box or junk folder because that's going to be particularly important is that's how you're going to get information about any missing documentation that you need to provide. Now I want to talk briefly about this electronic signature option. It is only an option. Some people are not comfortable uh, providing an electronic signature on the certification document. The online application will allow you to do it that way, but if for whatever reason you prefer not to do the electronic certification, you can mail us a hard copy of that portion of the application only. And this is the address where you would mail it and you would also send us an email letting us know that we should be on the lookout for that particular uh, certification uh, documentation. Additionally, as I mentioned, with this missing documentation, you will get an email from us indicating what documentation is missing or incomplete, and you will have 10 business days to get us that missing documentation. And again, when Maku goes through the pieces, typically what we end up seeing sometimes is missing is people don't have their tax clearance certificates yet. They may not have women and minority business certification, or they may not have provided all of the employee verification documentation. And again, you submit the email with, you, you're not able to go back into the system to add your information to your application. You need to email us with your documentation attached and to make it easy for us, just please use the subject line, Catalyst Seed R&D Program, Missing Documentation Submission and the name of your company so that we can easily put that into the online uh, record application uh, for you. If after the extension date, we've given you those 10 days to get that missing documentation and it has not been submitted, then your application will be considered incomplete and it will not be scored and it will be rejected. So please, if you've got missing stuff, please pay attention to those, uh, to those deadlines. Again, we know that there are COVID delays that are impacting some of the state systems to get documentation. So if you have attempted to get the documents, but do not have them by the extension date, just provide correspondence, email correspondence, or receive some sort of evidence that you've attempted to get that documentation. Then your application will be deemed complete for scoring purposes and the missing documentation, however, must be submitted before we can make any recommendations of an award to your company. So we're at least letting the application get scored, but we cannot make awards until all of the missing documentation is provided. So again, the timeline, our applications opened yesterday. We're holding our informational webinar today. Applications close on Monday, January 31st at 5 p.m. So you've got that last weekend right before, if you're still working away, you've got that last weekend to finish it up, but it's closing at 5 p.m. on January 31st. And again, the reminder about the missing documentation. Again, the online application link is there and the direct link for the application uh, is shown as well. And at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Maku, who's gonna talk us through how to access the online application system. Thank you, Judith. So I'll, I'll quickly try and go through this um, very carefully um, and please again, as mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, feel free to submit any questions in the Q&A section below. So there's two ways to access the online application. You can find this on www.njeda.com forward slash CSIT forward slash 
Now this link will take you directly to our webpage in which you'll be able to find the, um, if you scroll down, as I'm showing here, this is our uh, website. If you scroll down to the section of grant opportunities, you'll be able to find the Catalyst Seed Grant Program. Once you click on that, the program guide will pull up. There is an online application link that you can select and go directly into the application. There's also the notice of funding and some of the support documents that you're actually going to be required to fill out, such as the milestone and budget template, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, so once you click on the application, you're then brought into the application portal. Now, if you just want a direct link to the application, you can type in this address, application.njeda.com forward slash CSIT, and that link will directly take you to the beginning of the application. So the first page you'll see is the welcome, is, a, is an overall welcome page. Um, this is extremely important to read. It provides, again, um, that we're, you know, this the application opened yesterday, December 6th at 9 a.m. and it will be closing on January 31st. Um, we want to, in order to complete your app online application, you must register for an account first and we'll walk through the username and password that you will create. You'll be able to utilize that username and password. Um, as you continue the application, if you need to save and come back, you'll be able to use that. Um, you may use the help slash assistance button on the top right of the, um, the email or the right to, to get assistance or directly email CSIT at njeda.com if you have any questions throughout the application process. But what's even most important on this page are some of the documents that you may want to start collecting prior to starting the application. And this is important because you're going to be asked to upload these documents. So one, as Judith mentioned earlier in the presentation, is your employee verification documents. We will be asking you to submit um, employee verification documents, 1099s, W-2s, um, K-1s, or offer letters, depending on the employee type. So if you have those documents, I um, saved on your computer. Um, we 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 you know advise that you prepare those documents before the application. Your tax clearance, as Judith mentioned, sometimes this this particular document takes some time to obtain. So we encourage that you go on um, you you go on the the state site and begin um, that process of obtaining your tax clearance. This particular document. Um, it should, we should mention that it does have a six month period and then you would have to renew your tax clearance. For, so for those of you that already have one, I encourage you to make sure that the date on that document is current. If not, we encourage you to go on the link and um, uh, uh, start the process of receiving another one. And again, if you are a minority or women owned business, um, and you have not began the official process of getting a certification, a New Jersey business um, minority or women owned certification, we encourage you to go into the NJ portal and begin to obtain that prior to the application. We do not want you to wait on these things to come in, but we do encourage you to start um, the process of obtaining these documents as you are uh, completing the the application. So as I mentioned, you start you you we, you first have to develop a username and password, um, and this is uh, this is easily done by just put, you'll be asked to put in your first last name, your company's, your phone number, um, create a username, and then create a password, and then just retype the password. Um, remember. Um, to write down your password and username for future reference. Again, you can save and come back into your application as long as the application is open. 
Um, but we, we encourage you not to recreate new passwords and usernames because for every application you start, we do see it on our end. Um, and we wouldn't want you to have multiple incomplete applications in the system. So make sure to write down your username and password so you can go back into the online application to complete your application. You'll then, once you log in, you'll be able to start a new application. Now, CSIT offers a variety of grants. Um, you'll see um, two options. We currently have the Catalyst Seed R&D grant program open. We also have a voucher program. Make sure you select the Catalyst Seed grant program. Um, then you will be asked to either select whether you're applying for the $150,000 grant if you are working in the therapeutic drug development area or the $75,000 grant if you are working in the advanced manufacturing, advanced transportation, logistics, film, digital media, life science, or other non-retail food and beverage, professional and financial services, or technology. So you must select one. Then we ask for a very brief description on your project, no more than up to 50 characters. And this description is really for your reference only um, it will be submitted, it will not be submitted with the application. Then you will go into the beginning of the application. The first four questions are eligibility questions. And the reason why we included these four eligibility questions is because we wanna make sure that before you go through the very, um, the, the process of applying, we, we wanna make sure you're eligible. So we ask very, um, four very clear questions. Is your company developing or testing new technology, um, innovative technology in those sector areas um, that I mentioned earlier? So again, this is yes or no. If you do not fall within these sectors, then there will be a prompt that says you're not eligible for this particular grant. Um, another question is, please, um, has the company, do the company have a minimum of one full-time equivalent employee? As Judith mentioned, um, again, this is a yes or no eligibility question. Um, the company has less than $2 million in prior third-party funding. Again, this is a yes or no question. And lastly, the company has less than 500,000 in previous calendar year sales revenue. Um, and again, so we wanna make sure that you fall within um, these eligibility requirements before moving forward. Um, and if any of these questions um, are, uh, you know, if you, if you put no for any of these questions, you will receive a prompt that shows that you, your company may not be eligible. But again, feel free to email us if you have any questions regarding these eligibility requirements. The first part of the application is the company information reacts for the legal name of the company and a brief description of the company. Please be mindful of the word limits. Um, as you type, as you begin to type in these text boxes, the boxes will expand, um, but there will be a word max for us most of our questions. We ask for your company headquarters and information, the company's website, the state of formation of the company year, the year established, the legal structure of the company, your industry um, NI, NAICS code and your EIN number. And just very briefly, um, Many of you may already know this, but your NA, um, the, the North American Industry Classification System is the portal you would go in to just get your code. This is a six digit number really used to kind of classify the type of work that your business is in. So you would just go into the company lookup tool um, and look up your code and place your six digit code within that um, particular line of the application. We then have what's called an employee um, still under company information. We want to um, gather a list of all employees that work for the company at the time of the application. This is full-time, part-time, consultants, interns, et cetera. We, um, you do this by completing an employee log for each employee. 
we ask that you provide the employee name, their position, the date they were hired, the type of employee, the number of hours worked per week. Um, is this employee, um, is the employee's work located in New Jersey, primary work location address? Um, is the employee getting paid? Does the employee have equity in the business? And then you would also select which verification document you will be providing, as I mentioned earlier, for that employee, 1099, W-2, so forth, and so on. Now, you would do this for each employee. Now, many of our um, small companies have maybe two, maybe three employees, but we encourage you to put um, to list everyone that is a part of that company working on working on this particular project. We do this because again, we need to make sure to calculate the minimum, um, the, the, you have an, a minimum equivalent of, of at least one full-time employee and the system allows us to, to calculate that based on the, the number of hours worked per week per employee. Again, under the company information, um, we ask here, is the company um, a woman-owned business as certified by the, New by, by the state of New Jersey? Is the company a minority-owned business as certified by the state of New Jersey? And you would indicate that. And if you, again, if you have the certifications towards the end of the application, you'll be asked to upload that information. We'll also ask, um, provide details on all funding, excluding government grants, as Judith mentioned, that the company has raised. So you'll select the funding type, you'll type in who the funder is, and you will then type in the amount. We ask you to be as um, extensive as possible for, for this. Um, and then, so continue, for every additional funding source, you can just click the add additional funding source button and continue to, to upload all of the, the, the funding sources that you do, um, that your company does receive. Again, excluding government grants. We then just go into primary contact information. This is the um, primary contact for, for the grant. We ask for your contact details, name, job title, address, gender, ethnicity, um, if you are a veteran or any disabilities. The project description is, is the main part of the application. Um, we begin by asking which sector, which, um, which you know, industry sector do you fall into? What sector is your proposed seed grant project in? You will check off one of these areas briefly describe the innovation that your company is developing and for what application. Again, we want you to be very detailed in the project description section while being mindful of the word limit. Um, please be as detailed and as specific as possible as you go through this section. We wanna know who or what um, are the incumbent players in the ecosystem um, and their respective kind of solutions to your proposed projects. Um, we wanna know this because we, we're, we're very interested to make sure that, for instance, you've done your due diligence and, and getting a sense of who else out there um, is working in this space. We ask for the name of the company, um, the proposed solution, and just, you know, as you, as you write, type this, type this up, just please differentiate between the various companies. So for instance, again, um, as you add in an additional company, you can just click the add additional company button, button um, to, add a, to add a different company um, and the, the, the proposed solution. So for instance, there may be other uh, companies that are working um, on, on addressing a similar issue that your technology is addressing and, and again, um, these are some of the, and this is, these are some of the details we were looking for. If applicable, list any intellectual property you have associated with this innovation or project. Um, again, you, we ask for if you have a patent, um, the patent number, patent title, and the status of that patent, if it's pending or if it has been finalized. And as you move through this process, you can um, add additional 
um, patents if you have more than one. We then move on to a section called milestones and budget. We ask briefly describe how the funding will be used to further the research and development of your technology. Um, and we included a milestone and budget template that we request that you use, fill out, save, and then upload later in the application. This is what the milestone document looks like. Throughout the one year of this grant, we ask that you just think about some really brief um, milestones that you anticipate will be accomplished in quarters one, two, three, and four. Um, these are really kind of high level, but yet um, high level specific milestones that you, you aim to accomplish. And then you can be more specific um, and detailed in this previous um, question here where you're asked to briefly describe it. Um, but here we, we, we wanna get a sense of um, what can we expect um, your milestones to be for the duration of the grant. You would also include your company name, the start date of the project, um, as well as the end date of the project. We also provided a template for the budget. Please use the template as it's designed. Um, we just ask for a breakdown of your personnel, equipment, materials, external services, um, any marketing or, or legal expenses. We ask that you sign and date the budget. So you would fill this out, save it, and then upload it towards the end of the application, which I will um, I will, just, I will uh, discuss once we get towards the end. We have a go-to-market, a few go-to-market strategy questions. Describe your proposed business model. Who are your target customers and how do you intend to market your solution to them? How are you planning to scale up your business in the next three years? Now, again, the grant is for one year, but we, we were really interested to see how you look to expand your business. In our economic environmental impact, we're very interested in one of our impact measures are really looking at job growth as that's one of the, that's the mission of the commission. So we ask how many jobs do you intend to create again in the next three year, in the next three years and in what particular fields um, within your company. We ask you to list all the team members who are proposed to be involved in the project, including a brief description on their roles and um, the role that they will play. So again, the name, the title, um, the any post-secondary degrees that, that have been received by that individual and just a brief bio on your team. And you can, again, as you hit continue, you can, um, there will be an add more button where you can add as many team members um, as you have on, on your team within the company. Judith mentioned um, that we'll have an opportunity for virtual presentations um, from the applicants regarding your proposal. We find that these virtual presentations really help companies further describe their work and, and, and make any clarifying points. So we want, um, we included this acknowledgement that each applicant will be willing to um, conduct a virtual presentation. We find that this only really helps to uh, really further clarify your proposal. So you would just check this box off um, and agree to a brief presentation and hit continue. This is the, an example of the legal questionnaire that Judith mentioned that she would review, sign, and then send back to us. Again, um, for this particular part, we ask for any applicable affiliates. Affiliates means any entities or person having an overt or covert relationship such that any of them have um, any one of them have directly or indirectly controls or has the power to control another. So again, where we ask for any affiliate companies um, that's connected to your business, you would just report this, um, the name of the affiliate entity or person um, provide the federal employment employer ID number um, and submit that to, to us. 
when you get towards the end of the application, you're going to see a list of required documents. Now we cannot stress enough how important it is to print out this document and for your own knowledge, just check off each um, document as, you, um, as you're uploading them into the portal so you know that your application is complete and you, you hopefully will not be receiving a resubmission email from us. So I'll just walk through each required document um, with, with all of you today. The first is um, all applicants must, um, must include the following documents, a demonstration of evidence um, that proof of concept has been achieved for the project. Now, Judith mentioned this. So what, what documents would we accept um, as proof of concept, description of the proof of concept results, maybe a published paper outlining the results achieved, successful completion of a federal SBIR, STTR grant, or a contract related to the project, confirmation documentation from a university tech transfer office, um, if the project relates to technology that has been developed at a university. So any of these documents we will accept um, as evidence of proof of concept, you would just upload what you have and submit it to us. Of course, you would submit the budget and milestone template that I just presented. You would use those exact templates. You can find the template either on the online portal, as I showed you, or when you go into the CSIT website, um, you will also see um, a copy of the budget and milestone template um, on the website with FAQs, the online application, as well as the notice of funding. We also, of course, ask you to upload the employee information, the employee verification information. We ask you to upload the internal payroll documents indicating each employee's name and number of hours of work and the most recent company tax filing documents. We ask for you to upload a tax clearance. Again, um, if you have never obtained one, um, please go on the state website and start this process as soon as possible. And if you do have a women or minority owned business, New Jersey certification, we ask you to upload that as well. Um, Judith spoke of the signed CSIT certification that you can electronically sign or um, print, sign and, and mail to us or email to us. Um, so again, please print out a list of these requirements. Um, make sure that you um, that each of them has been um, have been uploaded properly um, before you submit your application. Um, if not, then we will circle back to you in regards to um, a resubmission email. And this is where you would upload each document. Um, Fine. If there's, if we, you know, you can upload them as a as a Word document, Excel, uh, Word Perfect, text or or PDF. Um, as long as the you you as long one as you upload one after another, you'll see them on your screen, um, and then you'll be able to continue. Um, and then finally, you would submit your document. We would receive an acknowledgement on our end. Um, and again, if you have any questions or run into any issues, feel free to email us at CSIT um, at NJDA.com. Some helpful tips. Um, again, please go on our website and read the notice of funding. It's very specific in terms of the eligibility requirements, the um, required documentation, the timeline, the scoring, factors that Judith spoke about, as well as the bonus scores. So please make sure to read the notice of funding. Get an early start on the application. As you can see, there are a few sections that, that you do need to um, complete, and there are a few documents that we do need. Um, provide early, um, complete answers in the technical proposal section. Um, be as specific as you can, um, as detailed as you can regarding your project. Um, get the state documents if needed, the tax clearance, the, the minority women-owned um, or minority women-owned business certification. Email any questions to csit at njeda.com. And again, check 
for the missing documentation follow-up email from us. Um, because again, you have that 10 day period after you submit to get your missing documents in. And we, we definitely do not want your application to be disqualified. Again, this is the link for you to apply. And if you have any questions, feel free to call really or, or email us. We, we check this email regularly. And at this point, I see that we have a few questions. Thank you, Maku, for uh, that great presentation. One of the things that is going to be posted on our website, in addition to the notice of funding, which I cannot impress upon you, print it out. I know we're trying to be green, but I think it would be helpful. Print it out, make some notes of things that you need to pull together in order to apply for the application. We will post frequently asked questions and questions that we answer during this uh, webinar will also be added to our FAQ document so that you'll be able to go back and refer to that. There was a question asking about how long it takes to get a tax clearance certificate if you don't have one. That could be a you know, several week process and depending on your company's uh, you know, particular you know, circumstances. So please, if that's something that you don't have, go on and, and start that process uh, right away. There was a question asking about revenue and is SBIR grant revenue included in the $500,000 revenue calculation? And the answer is no. SBIR grants are excluded from both the $2 million in funding requirement and they are excluded from the uh, revenue requirement. There was a question asking about founders when you're calculating the number of employees you have. Yes, please include founders as well as other individuals, whether or not the founder is or is not taking a particular uh, salary. There was a question about if you're having difficulty with MWBE certification, please also let us know if there's any particular issues that you're having you know, with some of the certifications. Again, we know that sometimes these things take time. We may be able to assist, but again, as long as you've got some, you know, save a copy of whatever you submitted to them, or if you get an email back from the system indicating that your application is in process, take a screenshot and save that. There was a question asking if artificial intelligence is considered part of the technology area, and the answer is yes, artificial intelligence uh, would be considered. There was a question asking about whether or not you needed to have an SBIR or STTR grant in order to apply for the Catalyst grant. Maku shaking her head no, no, you do not need to have a prior SBIR or STTR grant in order to be eligible. You need to report five years of economic impact data back to us. Part of the reason we're asking for the economic impact data back and as part of the grant agreement, there's a template that will let you know what kind of information we're looking for. That gets reported back to us annually. We like to be able to tell the state legislatures what has been the result with companies that have received the funding so that they will continue to give us more money to give out in terms of grants. They wanna know that this money that is being given to New Jersey businesses has gone to good use, that we're able to create jobs, get more products in the marketplace, perhaps you've gotten uh, intellectual property. There was a question uh, asking about use of funds. 30%, and again, if you read the notice of funding, you'll see that 30% of the funding can be used for marketing, uh, product uh, conferences, uh, intellectual property, so that you can use a third of the budget for non-R&D related uh, purposes. There was a, a question asking about if I've done a friends and family round, do I need to list each investor on that upload piece? And the answer is yes. And you just kind of, as Maku showed, you just kind of keep clicking add and then you can add the additional uh, investors to that, uh, 
to that portion. A question, does the CEO count when we're looking at employees? Yes, the CEO counts. And again, when you're looking at those calculations, everybody who's working on the project should be counting. Someone had submitted a question that they're having some difficulty uh, registering online with the system. We will uh, please send us an email to CSIT at njeda.com and we'll circle back with the uh, EDA IT staff to, to try to figure out what particular uh, problem you're having in terms of being able to get onto the uh, platform to register. I, I, we're not able to answer that particular uh, question right at, right at the moment. So Maku, I don't know if there's some other questions that you see. What is the word limit for the project description section? Well, uh, again, each um, question that you um, come across will have a specific word limit um, for that question. So just be mindful of that as you go through each question. Okay, there's a question asking about how many grants we anticipate awarding. We have a budget of 1.5 million. We are anticipating awarding uh, five grants in the life sciences area at 150K, and we're anticipating awarding 10 grants in the uh, $75,000 area. Okay, someone is asking, what if the company has not started five years ago? How can we submit five-year economic Im impact data? It's five years going forward. It's not looking backward, but it's looking forward. So five years after you complete the uh, grant with us, you'll be getting an email reminder that we need your economic uh, impact, uh, impact data as part of the uh, activity. There was a question asking, can we upload um, videos? No, we, we don't want videos. We really just want a written, uh, a written description. Let's see here. Does the published papers and granted patent support the proof of concept? Um, yes, we do accept, um, again, if you have published papers and results, we, we, we encourage you to, to submit that um, as proof of concept. And again, we can talk, you can send us an email and, and we, can, we can definitely talk further. further there's, a there's a question, if we just started up and we haven't paid any taxes yet, then we'll just sort of ask you to put on a piece of paper, a letterhead indicating you know, that the company started, let's say October of, 2021 and we've not yet paid any taxes and, and sign it so that we've got, again, some documentation that we can refer back to uh, relative to uh, relative to that. Um, there's a question about non-retail food and beverage asking whether a wholesale and distribution company qualifies as non-retail food and beverage. Again, this is a seed R&D grant project. So you need to be working on a research and development uh, project. So not knowing all of the details around this particular uh, question, it's not clear to me that a distribution company is doing, if you're not doing any research and development, then this is this particular grant is not an appropriate uh, grant for you to, uh, to look at. There are other opportunities from the Economic Development Authority that you can look at that may be able to uh, address, address your needs. So I see there's a question asking, you know, was, you know, was funding, again, this is predominantly funding for use in research and development activities to further development of early stage innovation, uh, innovative concepts. We encourage you to absolutely go back onto the CSIT website, take a look at the notice of funding, take a look at the uh, previous, you know, previous questions uh, that, you know, that are posted. And again, reach out to us if you've got further questions about the opportunity. 
and I'll just. Okay, so I see there's a question asking, you know, was, you know, was funding, again, this is predominantly funding for use in research and development activities to further development of early stage innovation, uh, innovative concepts. We encourage you to absolutely go back onto the CSIT website, take a look at the notice of funding, take a look at the um, previous, you know, previous questions um, that, you know, that are posted. And again, reach out to us if you've got further questions about the opportunity. So at this point, we'd like to thank everyone for participating. We look forward to receiving your applications and appreciate all of your contributions to New Jersey's innovation economy. Thank you. Thank you.